Hi YouTube world, welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. I am Adrian. I live in New York City and I love playing with makeup and it is week four of my week in makeup. What did I play with in my stash? What did I purchase and play with? What was sort of in my arsenal? And I have a lot of opinions this week. I have a lot of opinions. I thought it would be fun if I applied some of these products on my face. I just have a moisturized face on and talk to you about what I think about these products. I think when this week, I initially started off with an idea that I wanted to focus on MAC because I have quite a few products from MAC and I know that they're doing away with their Back to Mac program. Instead, I got very distracted by a bunch of new products I picked up by Laura Geller that I wanted to talk about. So let us talk about Laura Geller. I picked up the new Spackle Skin Perfecting, this one here in bronze. I really like the spackle primer from Laura Geller, but in mattify. And actually I find that mattify is not that mattifying. It sits really nice on the skin. I'm gonna actually put that one on this side of my face and it does have like a little bit of a color, but I just love how kind of, it has like a moussey, but also like a dry oil feeling. And to me, it does have a little bit of a mattifying effect. I think it's very flattering and works really well with her powder foundation products, which is what I'm most accustomed to. I have three of her powder formula foundations, and I'm going to talk to you about those as well because I played around with all of them and I've made some decisions on that as well. On my left side, I'm going to apply this bronze color. Now, this product I thought was gonna be a bit like the Charlotte Tilbury, um, she has this product that it, it has like a little bit of color in it and you can mix it with your foundation and it just like kind of darkens your skin up ever so slightly or gives you a glow. So this product has a really nice texture to it, similar to that Mattify, but it is in the original Spackle formula. I don't have that original spackle formula any longer because I just didn't think it did enough and it didn't leave my skin as like velvety and prepped as the mattify version, but it also didn't like hydrate. I just didn't know what it was to me. And this I'm finding is the same kind of problem. Um, I thought I was at least going to get a real lovely bronzy glow from it and then I could just maybe spot conceal and it could be a nice lightweight kind of complexion day, which I do all the time. But you can see it like there's like no difference between the two sides when it comes to color. So this just doesn't impart enough bronze. I wish they would have added more pigmentation. And if they do, I wish that they come, it comes out in the other formulations. Like if this comes out in Mattify and it ups the pigmentation, I'm for it. But as of right now, this is, this is a pass for me. But this one isn't. This is a great primer and I highly recommend it. I saw that she had a new foundation. This is the Double Take Liquid Foundation. Actually, my favorite powder of hers is the Double Take Foundation Powder, uh, the baked one. That's this one here. I wear mine in Fair, actually, and I just love it. And I might use it a little bit today. This one that I picked up in the new liquid form is in the shade Light 150. And if I'm going to complain about something when it comes to Laura Geller products, for me at least, it is very, very difficult to get skin matched for foundation. I fell in love with her powder products, her marbled foundation powder products a while ago. And the process of getting the right shade for me was a bit of a nightmare. However, they make it kind of easy. Like the people at the Laura Geller customer service are really wonderful. But I ended up knowing that Fair is actually probably the best color for me. 
Um, and I'm not truly fair when it comes to other brands. I, I'm definitely light. And um, it's just weird to me. And also the products tend to pull very warm often. And so here I didn't feel comfortable getting light or fair in this. Maybe I should have because every other product is fair in her brand, but it just looked so light on the site. Well, it's this really beautiful glass bottle and it has a large doe foot applicator. I'm just going to show you the color. Um, it's quite kind of, it ends up being very yellow on my skin and yet also has like a lot of peach and it's not a good color for me. Formula though, is actually really nice. I applied this all over my face one day. I kind of made the shade work and I liked it. I liked it. And so I just found it had a really nice medium coverage. I didn't build it up to full, but you could see it there. It, it does cover quite a lot. Ignore obviously the pigmentation. I just think the colors are really off and maybe there's some forgiveness more in the baked powder products, but if you're gonna do a liquid foundation that's medium to full coverage, you need more shades than what is offered in the line. I think I might end up picking up the other shade because I really do love the application of it and that control with the doe foot. And I did like the way it sat on my skin. The one thing though is on the back of the box, it says our versatile medium coverage foundation is the perfect addition to your complexion routine, offers a natural matte finish. Uh, I don't know about matte. I never felt it was, it was matte matte, but it was a nice natural finish, I would say, and pairs well with any of our baked powders including our Balance and Brighten Foundation for the ultimate imperfection. This is where I feel the description went off. When I actually used my powders with this, my skin looked, it looked so heavy. It looked really, really heavy. It, it just didn't sit nicely. So I actually don't think you should be using the powders with this maybe the lightest hand as a setting powder, but I don't use any of her powders as a setting powder. So I don't know. I, I don't like the description on this. So I ended up concentrating a lot on using the powder foundation from her line. And in doing so, I realized there's one I don't like at all. And that is the Baked and Balanced Glow Foundation. I find it to be extremely, extremely glowy, too glowy, and it doesn't have enough coverage for me. In fact, the Baked Balance and Brighten as well doesn't have a lot of coverage. You could put this on with a kind of a velour puff or a puff of sorts, but if you just apply it with a brush, even it's a dense brush, it has a nice coverage, but it's still not a lot. And you can even see, I hope you saw that, how it tints my skin. And this is fair. And it's, it is darker than I actually even want it to be. That's it there with just light coverage. I would maybe spot conceal and then go in with the powder around the edges, but I like this. I like the way it sits on my skin. This one is just the Baked Balance and Glow. It's just too glowy. I don't, I mean, it is like almost straight up highlighter where I could put it just on the high points of my cheeks. But if I put it on as an actual foundation, it just ends up grabbing everything and looking very unflattering. So I am gonna part with that from my collection. And I'm happy with this kind of super light coverage and the heavier coverage of this one. This is the double take. And I will put this on this side of my face just so you could see the difference using that same brush. And I do have very, very dry skin around my face right now. I'm actually even going through a dry spell. And this stuff, th these powders, they don't sit 
on my skin poorly where they accentuate my dryness, which is really a miraculous kind of ability of the Laura Geller line. It is often geared to women over a certain age. I am over 40 and um, I feel like her products, even in the models that she uses, go well above 40, well above 50. And it's really nice to see that these products sit really beautifully on skin that is has even more signs of lovely aging. And so I really like that about supporting her brand because I also think it just looks beautiful on anybody's skin. But I hope you can see like how pretty that looks. It certainly gave me more coverage than this side. This side you could see a bit more sheen. This one's a little bit more natural, a little bit more matte. The reason I placed a Laura Geller order, product I was really, really motivated by, was this brand new marbled powder of hers, the Baked Blush and Bronze. And I got mine in Ginger Bronze. There's, I believe, three colors, and it's really not about owning a lot of colors. It's about getting the one that most suits the depth of your skin. And so this one was recommended for light and fair. Um, so ginger bronze, I mean, look at how gorgeous that pan is. It's so, so beautiful. And the shade is stunning. And you know, I have been wanting to pick up a powder like this for a while that actually works this way. That is a hybrid product. I know that Bare Minerals came out with the bronzer, which was supposed to be bronzer and also blush, but I don't think they nailed it. And I think actually Miss Geller did. <laughs> I, I think this is such a pretty product. You can build it up to be very, very rich. And I'm just doing it real lightly around. I want to use a stronger blush, but I just wanted to show you how pretty it is. And it has such a pretty glow to it. And again, you can keep building and building and building and this one packs a punch. But of course it made me whip out all my other Laura Geller blushes. And I just wanna recommend a few. I have three blushes in the Baked Blush and Brighten. I have one in a satin finish, one in a matte finish, and one that I think is more of a glow. So the satin finish one that I have is down to earth. This one's beautiful. This one is this plummy, but it has some of this brown. You can see automatically the glow. It's so pretty. So this is the satin formula. And even though there's glimmer, it's not too much, but ooh, do you see how pretty that is? The other shade that I have is Sunlit Rose. This one's beautiful. This one has a little more shimmer in it. It's definitely more vivid. And this one kind of just gives you that fresh, you know, uh, you just went out in the cold look. It's a very easy blush to just pop on the apples of the cheeks and really easy to blend. And you can go very ham. Like if I really went in there with my my brush and then I went onto the cheeks, you can build this up so it can be actually very, very, very bright. But I just kind of wanted to do something a little more subtle. So that is Sunlit Rose. And you can see that this one has a little bit more of a gold sheen. Last one that I have is one of the newer formulas. Uh, Down to Earth is a fairly new shade too. And this is in the shade Tropical Peach, and this is her matte. That's this one here. I'll put some on, because <laughs> why not? So this one's very pretty, and it's kind of very poor refining. So there you go. I put on three blushes for you. But they're all really beautiful. Um, it just really depends what you want. So if you've tried her blushes before and you didn't like maybe how sparkly they were, I've tried a few that I didn't like um, how shimmery. They just didn't sit 
nicely on my skin. Maybe you'd really like the, the matte formula. I think there might be another shade. Um, but I love that they're still investing in the line. I love that I feel like there's been a, a resurgence of Laura Geller and uh, interest in her products. And I can't wait. I can't wait to try more. Uh, let me know what you really love from her line as well. <laughs> I do have a lipstick all mention later in the video. There were a couple of items that I'll just speak to real quickly that I tried also during the week in the complexion category. I tried this Revolution Bronzer, Ultra Cream Bronzer in Light. This one here. This one, people were raving about it. Everyone was raving about it. I thought it looked laughable on my skin. This is the shade right here, and it looks like it would be very, very sort of neutral, but when I put it on my skin, it was so orangey. Let me see if I can, kind of like orangey and sickly looking. Yeah, you can kind of see the line. It turns orange on me. So I don't know what that's about, but I did not like it. I did not like it at all. I did find as a product, like to put it on, it was actually quite nice and easy. So I guess if there's a shade in this that works for you, um, it's just very surprising how different it looks in pan than it does in life. And in the daylight, it looks really crazy. I did try some MAC products and I did try some of my MAC blushes. I tried some of the Glow Play blushes. I have a few others, but um, I did do a look that was all kind of lilac this week. And this wore so well. It's such a beautiful, beautiful color. This is totally synced. It's just a real pretty pinky lilac color. And I love this formula. It lasts all day and it makes your pores disappear. I don't know what it is in this putty formula. I wish they would come out with other products. And then heat index, and I can't make heat index work. It's so beautiful. But I can't be light-handed enough to make this color work on my skin. It just, it is too, too rich. So unfortunately, I'm going to part with this one, but it is a beautiful product. It's just not made for my skin tone. Next up, I played with two new eyebrow products, which is rare for me. I'm not, it's not something I'm constantly seeking out is like new, new eyebrow products, but these caught my eye. So I just went ahead and I got them. They're both from the drugstore. One is by Revolution. It is called the Brow Powder. This one here, and I've been seeing a lot of different brands come out with this, so I figured I'd pick it up. So this is the brow powder. It comes in this type of component, and then it also has like um, four different stencils that come with it. Um, the other product I picked up is from NYX. It's called the Thicket Stick It Thickening Brow Mascara, and I got mine in the shade Espresso. So I will, spoil alert, tell you, I like both of these products. Um, thick it, stick it. What I like to do is I just like to brush backwards with the product and then um, brush them up. But what I really like about the product is it just gives me enough tint. It doesn't make them look foolishly kind of filled in completely but it does set and the set is not like too too crispy it still has some softness to it which is what i really like the only thing is because of the pigment i do have to go in and like clean a little bit with some micellar water and then also just set my eyebrows properly so what i do is i will just take another spoolie and i'll just kind of curve the hair so that they're folded down because i don't like my hair is to be sticking up completely. So let's show you the brow powder just because it's kind of fun. Um, and I don't know if this is like the right way to do it, but this is the way I've been doing it. I use stencil number four because I kind of felt like it's like the closest to my eye shape. I guess I wish that the stencils actually had a little bit more of a difference to them. They're all very kind of flat and long. And I feel like mine are a little bit more rounded and I feel like a lot of people's may 
you know, would be shaped a little differently. Um, and so then you kind of unscrew this and already there's product in the back here. Now, sometimes the product is too strong initially. So I just kind of tap a little bit on the back and the color that I picked up is medium brown. So I'll just show you, I kind of line it up as best as possible. And then I just dab it. And I don't jab it too aggressively because I did that the first time and they just look like they were real crazy. But that is the eyebrow. I don't know. I think it's pretty good. And then I just take that spoolie and I will soften it. I feel like they look, it looks really natural. I'm going to just use a regular gel. Um, this is the Benefit 24 hour brow setter. which is still like such a great product. Let me quickly do the other one. <laughs> so there is the other one. I think the shape of my eyebrow on my right is a little bit more conducive to getting a good fill of it. It's like a little fun, different way of doing makeup. And I do find that the powder lasts all day. So, I think it's a good product. Next up, I played around with four eyeshadow palettes. Um, I got these little minis from the new collection by e.l.f. And this is their Good Vibes Only collection. I got this, I got the little um, eye pencil set, and I also got the little happy face scrubby thing. This one, I haven't used it yet to wash my face. Uh, but I just was really attracted to these colors. And I initially, when they've come out with like bite-sized palettes like this, I have tried a few and I have liked a few of them. I liked the green one. I forgot what it's called, like something jalapeno. Um, I liked their the one that has the plum. And that's kind of like a rose rose latte or something like that. That one was really, really beautiful. A um, little bit fragile for travel and things, but uh, I did like them. I did like them. I did like the quality. I like the quality of both the mattes and the shimmers. And I say that because I really struggled with these palettes in terms of the shimmer. This one here is called Hey Sunshine. It's really pretty and actually all three of these mattes perform really well. So if these colors attract you and you're more into mattes, go for it. Um, they're very velvety, very smooth, and the pigment is really, really nice. Really nice on all three of them. And I created a really pretty eye look. Shimmer though on this one is almost like it's not very shimmery, it's very flat, and it's very chunky. Like there's, you see the sparseness? It's almost as though there's like an unsettled gel inside the formula, like that it wasn't dried down all the way, and it doesn't have a lot of reflect. Then on this, the other one, which is called Psychedelic Dreams, I loved this color story. I thought this was such a fun, fun color story. Now this one has just two mattes and two shimmers. So this one has a deep teal. It has this like chartreuse. It has this orangey kind of soft pumpkin matte and then this color here. And so the mattes here, again, perform super well. And that teal, you know, it's a little hard. It could get a little patchy and to build it up, to a very, very dark color is actually a little difficult, but you can do it and still the creaminess of the mattes, it's there and you can get a really nice eye look. The issue again comes in with these shimmers. The one shimmer here, it's kind of like a little creamsicle. It's almost non-existent. It's so, so faint and there's almost no reflect whatsoever in it. It feels really just kind of dry. And then the green feels smoother. 
but when you put it on, it's very thin. So if you wanted to get this kind of very strong green, even if you wet it, it's very difficult. It's just very thin. So I don't know. I feel like they did something different with the shimmer formulas in both of these palettes. And it was kind of upsetting. It was kind of upsetting. What wasn't upsetting was the other palette I played with. <laughs> I love this palette. This is by ColourPop. It's a Star Wars palette. I'm not a Star Wars person, so. And I don't even know why I picked this up. It's the C3PO palette, this one here. I, I've had it. I haven't played with it. And I just said, I'm going to play with it. And oh my goodness, it is so pretty. It doesn't look like much maybe to you in this palette. I'm going to insert some looks here as I talk about it. But essentially, it has three true mattes, one matte, so these are the three true mattes, which I love all three. This mustardy, mm, love it. This brown is dark enough to really be a really great liner. And this one, which is just great for blending out. Um, this one is a matte too, but it has some sparkle in it, but that sparkle is very faint. And you can, you can build up the look so that there's the sparkle is evident, or you can kind of buff it out to make it a little softer. Then you have kind of a color shock formula here, which is always nice to, to have. But what I love are these four shimmer shades. Now talk about doing shimmers right. Oh my goodness. So, so beautiful. So these are your four gold shimmers. And what I love about this is they tackled gold in every direction. So when you go and you pick up a gold eyeshadow, you better know what undertone you want in that gold because gold swings the spectrum. I mean, even think of like gold jewelry, right? Like if you pick up something that is 24 karat gold, it's going to be a lot richer, a lot kind of orangey, has a lot of depth and it becomes paler if it's 10 carat or 14 carat. So what I love about this is it kind of is representing that. And having this palette now gives me that. And yeah, okay, I do have the Natasha Denona Gold palette, but don't ask me what I think about it because I haven't even really played around with it. But this one, it's just so affordable and it's so, so nice. So even if you're not into Star Wars, just this one is just so, so pretty. When I use this and I use this kind of side by side, I created the look I should be able to create with this. I created it in no time with this one. So yeah, but the e.l.f. brush is really nice, by the way. And e.l.f. brushes generally are very nice, but I enjoyed using them and they're really pretty. They have really pretty handles. Let me put on my eyes the palette that I thought was pretty disappointing. This one is by Essence. This is the Don't Stop Believing in Mini Eyeshadow Palette. It's this one here. And they came out with mini palettes before that are kind of like musically themed. And so I thought, oh, this palette looked like fun. But these shades are very, very ho-hum. I'm going to start with this, the darkest brown they feel very nice, but when you actually put them on, they're just not as pigmented. And their pigment just sort of blends away. I'm gonna just use this kind of bony color. They're not powdery though, I'll, I'll give them that. I just don't think the pigmentation is there. Now I remember with those little six pans that they had before, I actually thought those had really good pigmentation. So. Again, not sure what's happened here. Where formulas change, it feels like formulas have been messed with. I mean, it's still pretty. It's a pretty brown. It's a pretty neutral brown, but it's not, nothing special. I am going to use the Your Power shade here. A pretty taupe, but it's not as pretty as I would have expected it to be. Then I'm going to use this your dreams here which is just a little lighter and that one is like barely there go ahead and try to use this lavender color that's right here just on my lower lash line now this one does have some pigment 
it's probably not the best color to put underneath my eyes because it kind of makes me look a little sick but i'll fix that with an eyeliner that i played with don't worry this is yourself and i thought oh that's gonna be the nicest color of all and it is like the biggest dud of all do you see how faint that is i mean look at that L look at the difference look at that in the pan and look at it on my finger so i'm just going to pick some up on a brush and try to add a little more vibrancy or depth to my underneath my eyes and it just barely does anything. It really barely does anything. I did pick up a MAC eyeliner. I picked up Teddy, someone I watch on YouTube, uh, one of the Pixie Woo sisters, uh, Nick Chapman. She actually, I guess, reintroduced me to MAC because she knows MAC products very well and I've loved seeing her use some products. So she uses Teddy eyeliner. So I'm gonna just go ahead and pop that in my waterline and a little bit in my outer corner. There you have it. Teddy's a really pretty color. It's like a brown, but it has, it's like a bronzed color. So it's not a flat brown. And I like that because sometimes if I use a brown that's like too brown, it's too much. But this just, I think, makes my eyes pop. And I mean, it really brought that entire mediocre eyeshadow look to life. So love that love that about eyeliner let us save this look a little bit more with mascara essence lash princess in the false lash effects the green one i love this one it's one of my favorite mascaras ever it is super affordable and just so easy so easy to create a dramatic dramatic look there you have it and I, I never wear false eyelashes or anything. So this is just with that one coat of mascara and it's just so good. It's so, so good. Um, this one is actually at the end of its life. So I'm gonna retire it, but I love it. I will absolutely repurchase it as soon as I'm done going through the rest of my mascaras. But this one at the price point that it is and how well it performs every time I've asked for it to perform even straight out of the gate. Well, actually straight out of the gate sometimes it's a little too liquidy, but let it dry out for like a couple of weeks. I didn't really use any kind of setting powder this week and I didn't use any face. I will mention my nail polish. I am using Moon Cat. This one is Electric Sheep. So this is the first one I use that is not magnetic, but it is beautiful it's this sort of like pale blue silver with a gold um shimmer but it's sort of not too sparkly it's so beautiful it's such a pretty color so highly recommend the formula and by the way this is already like day i don't even know what and i don't have a chip at all which is pretty incredible let's go into lip products so i used a few lip products let's start with the duds um, I picked up two of the e.l.f. lip lacquers because I saw they came out with new colors. Picked up this orangey one called Orange Blossom and also Black Cherry. Now, I wore Orange Blossom all day yesterday. And it started off like I really like this color. I love the orange it is. It's actually a much softer orange than you imagine. And my problem with this lip product is not is not about the initial application. So when it initially goes on, it is actually quite thick and it's hard to get product out onto the paddle. But when you first put it on, it's very thick. It, but you're also thinking, whoa, this is gonna last a long time. And so it's sort of like a trade-off. That's at least how I was thinking about it. The issue becomes that this product disappears. It really truly disappears. After just a couple of hours, it not only disappeared, but it took with it all the hydration from my lips. And so when I went to reapply it, it was like reapplying on leftover gum and it made my lips just terribly gummy and kind of 
skin gather up. It was really, really nasty. I had to actually find a way to wipe it completely off and, and I regretted it. So even though this color is beautiful on my lips, this long-term dries my lips out and I am just not a fan of this formula at all. This black cherry color, this one actually feels different on the lips. I feel like the pigment goes on more smoothly, like I have less building to do with this one. It have a slight, slight sweet scent, but nothing, nothing too strong. So that is the black cherry. It's a beautiful color. It's a beautiful color. The issue becomes the same thing happens with this formula, and I tried this today, unfortunately. Um, it can get really gloopy easily. So if you're talking a lot, you're going to get a little bit of that stringiness that happens with uh, thick, thicker lip glosses. And the reapplication of this, to make it reapply really nicely, you have to remove it completely. I have not been able to layer these. And that is just not, it's not for me. It's not for me. I have to be able to layer my products when they wear down. And these just didn't let me do that. So even at a great price point and great color range, these just are duds. Another lip gloss I tried this week. Now this one is actually very pretty, the formula. It is the Essence Extreme Care Hydrating Lip Balm. The issue is I picked up the wrong color. I picked up Milky Cocoa, and that's this, and it is a little too milky. It's not cocoa enough. It's like just, I don't know. Mm. But this one feels so nice. Um, this is Milky Cocoa. This is a terrible shade on me. Terrible, terrible, terrible. I mean, if I wore a lip liner, could I make this work? Absolutely. If I dabbed it, yes. But what's sort of nice about this product is putting it on in its full effect because mm, it just feels very creamy, buttery, really, really nice gloss formula. I just think I'm an idiot who picked up the wrong shade, but who is the shade for? Because this is like straight up concealer lips. There's very little brown in this. I really thought there was going to be more brown to this. So I think I would pick up another one of these, but in maybe a clear or um, something with color because I also picked up from Revolution this beautiful thing. I mean, look at how gorgeous it is. This is their lip gloss in Cherry Mauve. It's the one that comes in the swirly. It's supposed to be a dupe for the Givenchy, which I actually have. And you can see color match is pretty good. Pretty good on these. And this component is really beautiful too. I mean, not as beautiful as the Givenchy one, but it is really beautiful. I just want to swatch them for you side by side. So this one has a very fat kind of doe foot, which I don't mind. And the formula when you put it on is really quite luxe feeling. They feel like they have very similar, similar formulations. The pigment of the Givenchy is stronger than the one on the, the Revolution side. Both scents drive me insane, where this one is extremely floral, extremely floral. This one smells toxic. This one smells like someone in the factory, melted plastic, and didn't tell anyone and just hope no one was gonna notice. That's what this feels like. I'm actually, actually, I'm actually, actually, I'm actually, actually quite nervous in wearing it because it does have almost a burned plastic toxicity smell to it like when you accidentally burn a like a plastic spoon or fork and I, I I don't know it's happened to me before and it just leaves this certain scent in the air that's
very, very pungent. It's very, very specific. And this absolutely has it. And I worry, I worry. So I went online and I tried to look if others complained about the scent and they did. I would skip this product entirely just because I do not think the scent is safe. I really don't. I, I don't think it would be safe to ingest. And you have to be aware of your lip products in that way. You end up ingesting them. I mean, if you're eating, parts of it are going to get inside of you. And already it being on your skin is a bad idea because your skin is porous. Your skin is your largest organ. You absorb a lot through your skin. Um, and so, yeah, there, there's that element to it. So I'm going to end with the only lip product in all of these lip products that I actually really liked. And that is the Laura Geller lipstick. I picked up this lipstick. This is Radiant in Rose. And it's sort of gimmicky. And so I said, oh, let me pick it up. But this is why it's gimmicky. It's this beautiful gold packaging. And it was even gold on top when I before I used it. But it's this beautiful bronzy gold. And it's embellished. And it just looks fancy. And there you have the Geller. And I was like, oh, what color is that going to be? And I just want to show you. It's so buttery, creamy, and hydrating. It has like no real scent to it. But it ends up being like kind of a warmy rose on me. And I love it. I just think it's really pretty. And it's, again, the texture is so, so pretty. It's really comfortable, buttery, nourishing. So I'm happy I made the purchase. And it's fun. It's that, that, that gold is just an overspray, but it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. And it, I don't know. It's nice. The packaging's nothing, you know, to write home about. It's just your basic plastic packaging, but I do think it was a nice concept. I and think it. that's it. I have talked my, my own ear off. I've talked my own ear off, but I so appreciate you joining me on this journey of getting to know my makeup. I hope you enjoyed this week. If there's, I don't know, like products that I've talked about that you want to see me talk about more um, or brands that or brands that you want to see me I still am trying to make my way through all my foundations so I want to fo I still focus on that but you know I have a lot and I can definitely prioritize using one product over another more so just let me know let me know what you want to see um, I can try to make it happen but yeah, I'm, I am personally really enjoying this journey because I feel so appreciative for some of the items that I have. And even as I pick up new items, I'm just more picky about the items I'm picking up. And that's really what I need to see as a change for myself. So I hope everyone has a great start to the week. I know I owe quick lip reviews on some products don't worry I have them coming it was just a bit of a nightmare of a week again at my job so this is what I was able to do barely barely but I hope everyone else is having a great week and we will talk soon say hi in the comments below and um consider subscribing I always forget to say that I'm so sorry um so yes consider subscribing and following me on this journey. Okay. I love you all. Take care and I'll see you. Bye.